Hi! Welcome to Don's Key Tech. I'm back with a new video about how you can create your own custom Internet of Things or IoT web application to display your sensor data stored in a MongoDB database. I have here my ESP32 microcontroller running the Arduino framework and connected to it are several components. One is an LED, a 12 volt 4 channel relay, and a DHT temperature and humidity sensor. And this is my MongoDB database where I store the details about the three components connected to my microcontroller. Besides it is my custom IoT web application that connects to my MongoDB database and updates its records. As you can see, there is a one-is-to-one -one mapping between the records in my database and the user interface in my IoT web application. So there is an LED here, an LED here, a DHT type here, and a DHT here also, and a relay, and several input. And as you can see, if I try to click this toggle switch, and the LED connected to my microcontroller should turn on. If I toggle this off, then it should turn off. There is a 5 seconds delay before the next interval reading. So you would see that there is some delay before that changes takes into effect. The same is true also for the relay object. Since I have here our input pin of our relay, and if I trigger the first and the last input, then the first and the last input of the relay should turn on. And as you can see, the first and the last input turns on, which means that if there are any AC devices or high voltage devices connected to my relay, then it should turn on. As you can see also in here, I have a readings of my DHT sensor, which periodically is being uploaded by my Arduino ESP32 microcontroller. If I click to click the repression here, you can see that the value is now 76.4 and the humidity is 31.10. Let's try holding the sensor and see if there's any changes. As you can see, the value in the humidity change and the value also from the database also changed since the humidity or the temperature reading is only being read by my IoT web application. How cool is this, right? Would you like to know how I did this? Then let's start exploring. Before we deep dive on the code, let us discuss first some important concepts about this project. If you have watched my previous video about how you can control your Arduino circuit using a database, then you might be saying that it is not a practical approach to directly change the values on the database just so you can control your electronic circuit. Well, this is where you can create a web application that would interface with the data on your MongoDB database. So for example, change something on our web application and it would be reflected back into my MongoDB database. Our microcontroller would can then pick up these changes so that it can update or control the sensors or components connected to it. You may need some web development experience as you would be programming in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript creating this web application. In this video, I have chosen Python plus the Bootstrap CSS framework in creating this web application. Let's discuss a little bit about the IoT web application deployment and how you can leverage the features of a web application in your IoT project. So initially, your sensors, components, and circuits could be deployed inside your home network. You can then create your own REST API web server and web application inside the same home network. 
and store your sensor data using the Cloud MongoDB Atlas database. You can then access the web application through your browser or your mobile phones to control your circuit. But if you want to control your circuit outside your home, like if you wanted to turn off the lights when you are not near your home or in your home network, then I suggest that you could deploy the REST API server and a web application in the cloud where you can access it anytime. Some of the most popular cloud providers are the Amazon AWS, Microsoft Azure, or the Google Cloud. What's happening there is that you can rent a virtual machine and then deploy the REST API server there and the web application. Then you can access the web application that you have created so that you could control your home, net your home network or your electronic circuit wherever you are. Take note, by the way, that we are not creating a web server to run our web application inside your microcontroller or single board computer. If that is what you want, then it means that you can only access the web application when you are near your Wi-Fi network or your home network. I do have a plenty of posts or videos about how you can set up your own web server inside your microcontroller in both Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and MicroPython devices. So you can check out the videos in my playlist if you are interested in this. Now, just wanted to say something about how I was able to draw the values from my database into my web application. As you can see, for each records in the document, I have an attribute here called type, which represents the type of component that I am controlling. So let's say I have here an LED, a DHT sensor, and a relay with four pins. As you can see, there is a one is to one mapping with the records in the database to the values or the data that is being shown in the user interface. You'll see later in, in the code how I did this. So let's now go deep dive on how the code works. So this is the code for my REST API server and my web application. I have created this uh, web application inside my REST. API server that I have done in a previous video. When you check the app.py of this project, then the only changes that I did in here is to add this route called the route and then the root of my application. What this route is doing is just it just queries all the data or the records in my database and then it will need to render a template called home.html. Home.html is my web page, and then I'm passing it the list of sensors in here so that it can display the dynamic list of sensors. Let's go into my home.html template. This is my home.html template, and it uses the Jinja templating engine. So what the templating engine does is, if you see these values in here, you see that I am looping into something which means that I am looping for the list of sensors that I pass in from my app.py. And for each sensor that I am uh, looping, I'm checking what is the type. For example, this is an LED. And as you can see, I am drawing an LED toggle switch in here. If you are not familiar with the construct in here, uh, so you can see that there are several classes in here called the row, border, bottom, and then the knob, uh, component, and then container. I'm using, that's because I'm using the CSS framework called Bootstrap. Bootstrap, by the way, is a CSS framework. And if you are not familiar with to draw those fancy component, and this framework would help you create the needed components. All you need to do is some just understanding of basic HTML. As you can see, you can create switches by having a div and then uh, input this value and then you will be able to create your own div toggle switches element. So that's how helpful the bootstrap is and it would help you make your project be responsive. So as you can see, this is the mobile view of my project. If I exit this one, then it will look like this in laptops or in bigger screens like our uh, desktop computers or in tablets. And it will look like this in our 
mobile devices. So that's how cool this CSS book, uh, framework is for the bootstrap. So basically, that is how I was able to draw the each element in my sensors. And the only thing that you need to check out is that I have added several I'm using here, which are called the data element, which are custom attributes in the HTML because I needed to pass in the sensor ID for the MongoDB database. The reason why is my index.js needs to know the object ID before it can send the REST API call. So for example, for my LED switch in here, I have added an event listener to the change. And as you can see, I am extracting the, the custom ID, which is the object ID. I then check what is the current value, if it's high or is it low. And then I am sending a put request using the URL of my REST API server. Then using the patch API, I sent a method called put so that it would go into my put REST API server and then pass in the data that I have in here. Same also for the relay switch. I query everything for the relay switch. And then for each relay switch, I am adding the list of values of each pin. So for example, because I have four pins in here, so I need to send an object called values and then it should have the key in one, in two, in three, and in four. But you can see there is a, a JSON object here called values. And inside the for loop in here, I am checking the values of the key. So if you check my home.html and we go into the relay section, there is a for each input class, I am adding an object ID, the key for each unique record or row. Once you have already created the JSON object, then you can send also the same call for our REST API server so that you can update the changes in the database. For the DHT sensor, I'm just calling this uh, continually looping functions and then I'm calling the retrieve DHT readings. So by using the patch API, I'm just passing the sensor ID of my DHT sensor. Once I have got my DHT sensor ID, and it will just I'm just going to update the values in here in my update sensor readings so that whatever the values I have received from my REST API server is being displayed in this particular HTML element. See, so the home.css is just my local home.css and, and then I just added several changes on how the web user interface looks. And that is all actually on how this code works. The write-up for this project is available in my in the description of this video. So if you would like to understand more how I created this one, then head into the description of this video for you to take a look. The code for this project is available in my GitHub repository and you can see it also in the description of this video. And that's all. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!